Hello and welcome to the BBC School News live stream. Before we start, we have a few pupils going around classes collecting money for sport relief. It is a charity that uses the money they raise to transform lives for the good, both locally and globally. Over the past two weeks, 9AY and 9BY have been working hard on making interesting current news stories using different medias such as audio, video and written report. We have selected a range of different stories to present to you. Here is a news report on the bleep test that took place in school to raise money for sport relief. Yeah. <laughs> Look at their stuff bleep test, thank you for your donations. Introducing Biker, James and Connor. How do you feel about uh, winning overall in the big test? Uh, I don't really mind, but it's just for a good cause. There's a lot of atmosphere and good crack, so uh, I don't know it's, it's good. So, Mr. Ali, how do you feel about being part of this big test to raise money for us? Oh, it's very good to be part, but right now my legs are feeling like jelly. Uh, do you think you did well? Uh, well I think I got 8.1 in the bleep test, but I haven't really run in a, a quite a long time, so I was pretty pleased with it, yeah. Uh, do you think you would have wanted to beat Mr McDowell in this? I did want to beat Mr McDowell, but to be honest, his PE background, like, you know, he was, it's always going to be tough. 
you know, I, I really didn't think I could, but I wanted to, but I was never going to be able to. Well, Miss Grimm, did you enjoy the blink test? I did, I really enjoyed it. It was great to be part of something to help raise money for Sport Relief. Yeah. And how did you feel being uh, tied up with Miss McDermott? It's great to be tied up with Miss McDermott. She's a great teacher, and um, I think it was very important that we added a comic element yeah. to the Sport Relief Challenge, and Three Legged was definitely the way to go. Were you disappointed with being put first out? No, I think it was a, a massive challenge to be tied to another person, and I think Miss McDermott and I did our Yep, I think you did. Hey, Miss Wilson, how does it feel to be the top female competitor? Well, absolutely brilliant. Um, I just take part. I just took part today for the fun, and uh, then as we took part, you could see that it was getting very competitive. Yep. And obviously, by looking at Mr. McDowell and knowing that I wanted to beat him and Mr. Adley, it was just enough to keep me going. <laughs> Did you like the atmosphere? It was a good atmosphere? Very good indeed. A very enjoyable afternoon and very well organised as well. Thank you. James, how do you feel about doing the blue test on your bike? Well, uh, whenever I was stopping and going it was really, really hard but I loved it so much. It was brilliant and trying to beat Mr McDowell. The start it was easy but it got really hard. such a great idea to raise money for such a worthy cause. Adam will now read his scripture report on Glenavon. Glenavon versus Crusaders semi-final showdown. Glenavon Crusaders played extremely well to secure their spot in the semi-final of the Irish Cup on Saturday the 5th of April. Fans are very excited about the upcoming battle to see who can fight their way to the final round. Nathan, a dedicated Glenavon fan, has stated, I'm so excited that we made it this far. We haven't got to this stage since before I was born. 1997 was the last time we reached the semis. Glenavon played a nail-biting match against Glentorum, but battled hard to win 2-0. At the closing minutes of the ha second half, Glentorum won a penalty, which was slotted in by Jay McGee. Although they were down 1-0, Glenavon kept going strong and scored two late goals thereby securing their space in the semi-final. Crusaders' match against Ballyclare Comrades wasn't just as tight. The first goal coming in the first half from a well-placed penalty from N. Hanley. It wasn't until the second half that Crusaders increased their lead 2-1 with a goal by M. Snotty. This encouraged the team to score another three goals in the second half coming from D. Cadell, D. McAllister and G. McCutcheon. The final play was 5 0 to Crusaders. Both Glenavon and Crusaders will play to the best of their ability to the victors in the semi final match. Gary Hamilton, Glenavon manager, states Crusaders are a very experienced club who have won many finals. He continues, We have done well to get to the semi final for the first time since 1997. We asked about the training preparation. Gary said, we train exactly the same, but we would take it more seriously and do more fitness training. Gary Hamilton believes his club has it in them to win, but he knows it won't be easy to make to the, it to the final and face either Ballymena United or Queen's University. The one guarantee, regardless of who makes it to the final, it will continue to be a tight cup run. Thanks for that, Adam. We now have a video report on per Paul Moorhead's movie about forgiveness. Hello and welcome to our BBC Schools News Report. On Sunday the 9th of March, Paul Murhead accepted feature documentary at the Chicago Peace on Earth Film Festival for his provocative documentary, A Step Too Far, A Contemplation on Forgiveness. This film focuses on the concept of forgiveness, what it is and why we ourselves should forgive. It also shows us how different cultures implement forgiveness into their daily lives. We interviewed some people about their views and opinions on forgiveness. 
Mrs. Moorhead, did you learn anything from the Amish people? Yes, I did. I learned several things. I think um, one was the, the way they are very gentle people. So the way they speak to each other and the way they treat people and how they treat other people, whether they're strangers or part of their family, they're very gentle in how they speak and uh, they don't seem to have harsh attitudes towards people at all. So I, I learned that. And I also learned from the fact that they are a separate community, but yet they live side by side with a different community, the, the non-Amish people. And they're very much able to, to live side by side with that other community. And they're not saying, you're wrong and we are right. They're able to just live and do their own life and let the other people live their own life. And then finally, obviously, I learned a lot from their their forgiveness, their attitude to it, the fact that they practice it and they teach it to their children. Did you think the parents of the children in the shooting did the right thing to forgive the murderer? That's a very difficult question and a difficult one to answer. I think ultimately, yes, they did, but I'm sure it wasn't an easy thing to do. Yeah. And I'm not sure that I would find it easy if it was me. Here we have Paul Murhead, the director of the movie A Step Too Far, A Contemplation on Forgiveness. So Paul, what was your inspiration for this movie? The, the inspiration for the film was uh, after I read a book by a Mennonite bishop who had written about the 2006 Nickel Mine Schoolhouse shooting. And uh, I was really taken with the Amish response to the shooting, to the horrific event, and the idea of forgiveness. And I thought about this country here, I thought about the whole past, I thought about what are they going to do, and hopefully I thought maybe we can do something here which may inspire a few people to think differently. Okay, can you tell me about your experience in the Amish community? Well, um, we did meet quite a few Amish families, and uh, the, the, the unfortunate thing is that real Amish people are, are old order Amish people will not go on camera. So we could really only talk to them. So we talked to people uh, who knew them and uh, we took some of their experiences and put it in the film. Uh, but we found them very friendly. We found them very interested in what we had to say. As, as much as we were interested in them, they were interested in us. Um, and we got to ask them all sorts of questions. Like when I asked them, why do you forgive so easily? And the answer was, it's just what we do. Do you have another idea for a massive movie? Well, I don't know about massive movies. That's uh, <laughs> that's a Hollywood thing. But we're in post-production at the minute with a film that we shot in Harrisburg, the capital of Pennsylvania, which has to do with community engagement in um, urban areas and how uh, a White House initiative has affected uh, universities or colleges, as they would call them, which is working with their school district. So we're, that's at the minute. We're also in negotiations with two other groups at the minute for two other films. One of them is a follow-up to the Forgiveness film, which is looking at all the main churches here. But we have to see how that goes. Thank you. We asked some pupils from 9AY and teachers who have seen the movie about their point of view on forgiveness. So Julia, has this movie changed your perspective on forgiveness? Yeah, I think it has because this movie teaches us that we need to forgive to move forward and that we should forgive like the Amish people do. And Peter, do you think forgiveness is important in our day-to-day -day lives? Yeah, I think it's really important, especially in Northern Ireland. That's the only way we can move on is by forgiving each other, like Catholics and Protestants. Do you find the Amish lifestyle interesting? Actually, that's one of my, my big interests. I would read quite a lot of books about the Amish and I would watch a lot of stuff to do with the Amish and it's actually one of my dreams to go and not necessarily experience the Amish lifestyle but to go and visit uh, where, where they live and just um, see it for myself firsthand. I think it's a very simple lifestyle. I think there's a lot of good things about it but I'm not sure about, about the whole thing but it's definitely very, very interesting to me. Yeah. Do you think it's real? It's easy to forgive? No, <laughs> no. Um, I don't think it's an easy thing to do. Um, and watching the film, you know, um, a step too far. That that was a very emotional experience for me. But I think it's something that that God asks us to do, is to forgive people. And of course, He lived that out through, um, you know, what what Jesus did for us. And it's something that I, I do try to do but it's not something that I necessarily find easy. I need a lot of help, and sometimes it takes a lot of time, but it's something that I think is very important so that you can live with yourself as well as live with other people. I think forgiveness is very important. Thank you.
Last week, the American students from Messiah College in Pennsylvania answered some questions about their feelings on forgiveness. So if this was you in this situation, would you forgive the murderer? It would be really hard for me to say if I'd be able to because I've never been in such a situation with um, such a terrible loss. Um, my upbringing would say yes because my Christian faith has taught me to forgive regardless of the situation. But I've never, like I said, I've never been involved in such a, a, dr a drastic um, change in my life with the loss of a loved one. Um, to say I forgive, but I'd like to say I'd forgive. So did you find this movie emotional and why? I did find it emotional when I th believe I was in fourth or fifth grade when the Nickel Mines schoolhouse shooting um, happened and it happened in Lancaster County which is only a county over from where I live and so there were I live around a lot of Amish people who um, know the families that were affected by it and seeing the way that the Amish people were able to forgive so quickly was inspiring for me and for my faith and it really made me think about what it takes to forgive people um, and I can remember thinking back looking back on the situation I remember how immediately they forgave and so watching the film I was able to connect how I felt um, as a fourth or fifth grader and then looking back on it now um, as an adult it's it was really emotional and I think that it's inspiring for for us um, as Christians. This film has touched the hearts of adults and children alike. It has reminded us of the importance of forgiveness, but what does influence us to forgive? Family, faith, courage, love, friends. As Nelson Mandela said, forgiveness liberates the soul. It removes fear. That is why it is such a powerful weapon. We would like to congratulate Paul Murhead on his success and wish him even more in his upcoming projects. Thank you for watching. The movie really changed our view on forgiveness. Definitely worth watching. Megan is now here to read her report on the missing plane and how the community reacted. Discovery of debris. What do our local community think? Yesterday afternoon, satellite images revealed 122 pieces of debris 1,500 miles off the coast of Western Australia. It is feared that the debris could be from the missing plane. On the 8th of March 2014, flight MH370 from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing disappeared with 239 passengers on board. Numerous sightings have been made but as yet there has been no confirmation as to the whereabouts of the missing plane. A local resident has stated, my heart goes out to the families of those missing but also to the employees of Malaysian Airlines who has such a difficult job trying to find out what has happened and where the missing plane is. She wishes that there was more the local community could do to help out in this situation. A school teacher from a local school in Lurgan said, I find the missing plane a real mystery. How did it end up where it did in the ocean? And no trace of how it got there. I can't imagine how the friends and relatives must feel having been awaiting at the airport for the safe arrival of their loved ones. For them to be told that the plane is missing, it would be truly heartbreaking and I hope they get answers to their unknown questions. It is clear that everyone is devastated about their tragedy and the thoughts and support of our local community are with all and with everyone involved. Thank you, Megan. Think back to summer or Christmas exams. How much stress were you under? We are now joined by Julia, who's grouped on an audio report on an issue we all know about, exam stress. Hello, Julia. What inspired you to write a report about exam stress? Well, exam stress is something that I go through and I think a lot of people go through and also it was during the year 10 exams, so it's just something I thought could make a really good report. What were the advantages of recording an audio report? Well, it meant you didn't have to worry, you know, about the camera being in focus or how you looked. And also, I, find, I think it was quicker to record and we, our group was able to do it ourselves. Thank you.
The girls have certainly put a lot of effort into this report. Let's hear it now. The girls have certainly put a lot of effort into this report. Let's hear it now. It's nearing the time of the year that young people dread exam time. We are going to find out if exams are too stressful and if they are, what effects do they have on young people? Our reporter Chloe Gillis is talking to the NSPCC. Over to you, Chloe. Do you think exam stress is a big issue today? Um, I think exam stress is, is definitely a big issue. I mean, uh, we have actually had some calls this week about exam stress, but traditionally it's usually around, you know, the exam time. So not as much at the minute, but more around, you know, the summer time. Um, we do get a lot of the calls around exams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and why do you think um, so much pressure is put on a child today for exams? From the school, you know, obviously emphasising the importance of exams and also it can come from different places, you know, for example, depending on what a young person hopes for themselves. So if they have hopes for the future in terms of career that rely on exams, I think the pressure didn't come from that. And then sometimes it can come from the parents or carers as well, um, you know, because they sort of have a desire for their um, children to succeed. So it can come from sort of different areas. And also I think if a young person really feels anxious in general anyway, and they'd be definitely more prone to feel more anxious when it comes to exam time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And do you receive many calls about child anxiety on exam stress? Um, yes, I do actually quite a lot. I mean, as I said before, more around exam time. Mm -hmm. But um, whenever it is around sort of the exam time, we see a, a massive rise in the calls, um, particularly online if young people are just talking about um, worries about how to study or worries they won't do well or pressure from their parents as well. Mm -hmm. And how do you respond and help? Um, I think it really depends. I mean, Child Line would be very much focused on an individual basis, so it wouldn't necessarily be um, sort of talk advice about how to deal with exams. It would be more about exploring what it was like for that particular young person. Um, so it would be a lot of asking open questions about how they're feeling about exams and what's making them feel this way. Um, looking a bit about what support they're in their life. Um, and then obviously we can offer you know advice as well about suggestions about um, how you might be able to study or look about who they could talk to to support them with that. Um, and also there's different factors that can affect the stress. You know there might be different things going on in their life, for example bullying or relationship issues or something at home. So we'd explore that as well with them to see if that affecting the level of exam stress. Yeah. Thank you so much for all your help. Yeah, you're welcome. Very welcome. Yeah, thank you. So we have heard what the experts think, but what about the children? Our reporter Lois went out to find out over to you, Lois. Our year 10s at Larkin Junior High have just completed their exams to transfer to either the college or the or Craigavon Senior High. I went and spoke to the year 10s to find out what they thought about exam pressure. Exhausting, <laughs> nerve-wracking, hard, challenging, difficult, tiring. This is proof that children are finding exams too stressful. But imagine if you had learning difficulties. That would make exams more stressful. And what are the schools doing to help these people? We sent our reporter Julia to find out. I am here with Mrs. Murhead, the SEN support teacher who helps the young people who have learning difficulties with their exams. So Ms. Murhead, what do you do to help the young people with social and learning difficulties in their exams? Well, for their exams we provide them with a smaller quiet room. So instead of everybody going to the assembly hall, which is big and sometimes there's a lot of distractions there, they come to my room where it's a smaller environment and some of them even use a practice room where it's smaller again and they just feel comfortable in there. Do you think these children find exams more stressful than others? Yes I do because I think a lot of these children worry a lot about everything mm -hmm. and then they worry about exams on top of that again so yeah I do think they find it more stressful. And do you have any coping mechanisms for exam stress? Well we plan out their revision well in advance with them and we actually go through the revision with them uh, with an adult so whether it's me or the classroom assistants or their parents or sometimes all of those and we actually have timetable time for them to revise and go through it one by one 
so that they feel a bit more comfortable when it comes to the time. And we also make sure that they don't have too many exams in the one day because then that affects their revision as well. Mm -hmm. And we give them timed breaks if they need a break during the exam. That, that if they just need to go and have a, a glass of water or just a wee break or even a walk around the room. Um, so just whatever they need, we, we provide it. And finally, do you think exams are too stressful? In general? Yeah. Um, I think they can be at times. I think it depends. Some exams are more important than others, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There's more importance placed on them and then that puts more pressure on them. So I think, but on the other hand, life can sometimes be stressful, so you have to get used to it. Yeah, thank you. There you have it. Exams are too stressful, but we have some tips so you can keep cool during your exams. Give yourself plenty of time to revise. A revision timetable helps. Eat healthy. Healthy foods will help you concentrate. Take regular breaks. Your brain soaks up more information if you take breaks. And if you're feeling really stressed, talk to someone like Childline or your school's SEM teacher. Thanks for listening and good luck in your exams. That was a brilliant way to end the show. If you want to see, hear or read any of the reports, you can find them on the BBC School News Report website. Or you can go onto our own website, ljstv.com, to see them after 4pm. Thank you for watching.